My name is Drew Thompson. I'm the pastor of Union City Church in Brunswick, and I'm honored to be a part of the annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community Breakfast. The theme for this year is hope during these challenging times, and these are some challenging times, and we need some hope which is why I'm so thankful that the Community Action Authority has continued to have this breakfast and gather us, even if it's virtually, so that we can continue to be inspired to seek peace and righteousness and justice in our community. I'd like to offer an invocation for us as we get started, if you would pray with me. Our Father and our God, these are challenging times. And we do come to you this morning in need of renewed hope. But God, before we ask for what we desire and what we need, Father, first thing is first, we need to praise you and thank you. And God, we do indeed thank you. We thank you for the food that you have set before us. It's not the same food that we normally have. All of us are eating different things this morning. But you have nonetheless provided it, and so we thank you, God, for sustaining us and strengthening us. God, we thank you for the camaraderie that we can have in this experience. It's not the same as it normally is, but nonetheless, God, you provide us with what we need, with this connection to one another, and we thank you for that. And Father, most of all, we thank you for you, for your character, for your steadfast love for the fact that you never change, that you are the same yesterday and today and forever, that you neither slumber nor sleep, but that God, even during challenging times, you are moving, you are always working, and you're calling us to join you. So thank you for that, God. And we pray that at the end of our time together, as a result of being with you and being with one another, Father, that we would be just a little bit more faithful in our characters. Lord, that we would be a little bit more passionate about our mission. Father, that we, would, that we would dare to be a little bit more hopeful about your future and what you are doing because you're the one doing it. So, Father, we thank you. We praise you. We invite you to be here. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Monday, January 18, marks the 35th anniversary of the federal holiday in honor of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Signed into law in 1983 and first observed in 1986, the holiday is a deserving tribute to Dr. King for advancing civil rights and social justice through nonviolent protest. His was only the second birthday designated as a federal holiday after the observance of George Washington's birthday. As a Baptist pastor, King led a mass movement for freedom and human rights in the 20th century. In confronting white supremacy, he challenged a fundamental contradiction at the heart of our United States, one that denies equality for all. Born in 1929, King's existence as a black man was always contingent 
and conditional. In insisting that America live up to its promise, black men and women had no choice but to sacrifice their bodies and lives. 53 years after King's death, the promised land where black people take their rightful place on earth remains elusive. The protest against police brutality and the demonstrations in support of black lives are a powerful reminder that the United States has yet to fulfill its promises to black America. King's closing words at the Bishop Charles Mason Temple the night before his death captures the purpose and meaning of black protest and sacrifice. I might not get there with you, he said, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. On this MLK Day, let us all rededicate ourselves to building a promised land where black protest and sacrifice are not a requirement to live in the United States. As chairman of the board for the Coastal Georgia Area Community Action Authority, I would like to welcome you to our 19th annual celebration of the Reverend Dr. King Day of Commemoration and Remembrance. COVID-19 makes it a virtual celebration this year rather than our usual breakfast. But it is still important and entirely appropriate that we set aside this time to honor Dr. King's legacy and that we remember the example that he set for all of us in being responsible and nonviolent citizens who work for and promote equality and justice for all people. During these difficult times, we hope this celebration will inspire all of us to do our part and contribute to a more equitable world with God's help. And now it's my privilege to introduce uh, the mayor of Brunswick, the Honorable Cornell Harvey, uh, to bring greetings. Good morning, everybody. It's so, such a good time to see everybody this, this morning. I'd like to come and bring greetings from the city of Brunswick. We're so happy to be here, so happy that, that this city uh, celebrates Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. And this celebration is really a celebration about unity. Unity where all people, all people come together. You know, there are often times that we stand and we sit in times of, of conflict, but it's time to stand up in times of conflict. You can sit anytime in time of comfort. However, also, the drums beat. If you can hear the beat of the drums, the drums are beating to your own, your own tune. You can stand up, stand up for, for unity. Stand up for togetherness. On behalf of the city of Brunswick, where I am the mayor, Mayor Courtney Harvey, along with my fellow commissioners, Commissioner Julie Martin, Commissioner Vincent Williams, Commissioner Johnny Kaysen, and our own Mayor Pro Tem, Felicia Harris, we welcome you to this celebration. Thank you. And now we'll have some words of greeting from the Brothers of Chapel of NAACP, Ms. Sharon Blue Lee. Good morning and happy MLK Day. I greet you on behalf of the Brunswick branch of the NAACP. In 1909, an interracial group of activists established this organization to address the unfair treatment of people of color. For decades, we have remained true to this mission. Today, we continue to focus on job inequality, education, health care, the criminal justice system, voting rights, and much, much more. Dr. King dedicated his life to the fight for justice. It is befitting that I have this opportunity to greet you as we commemorate his birthday and his rich legacy. As you enjoy this event, think about what you can do to further the cause of justice and equality. Consider joining us. Visit NAACP.org. Be sure to include our unit number, 5174. We really need you. Join us. Together, we can make a positive difference. Our next guest is Greer Anderson of the Brunswick Chamber of Commerce. Good morning. I'm so happy to be here today to celebrate Dr. King and the spirit of Dr. King that lives through community action. The Chamber of Commerce is a member-based organization a group of people who feel that together they are greater than the sum of its parts. And in our community, these parts are not only businesses, 
but find nonprofits like Community Action. Late last year, the Chamber formed a new foundation that is specifically tasked with workforce development, diversity and inclusion, and leadership development. This came into being as we looked at our community and asked how we can help to make it a better place, not just to work, but to build your business and raise your families. I'm grateful to Ms. Therese Hamilton for serving on the Foundation Board with me. She's a wonderful source of knowledge and a great inspiration. We could not do what we do each day without partners like Community Action who make the Golden Isles stronger. They deliver hope and help and are an integral part of the success of our community. During these challenging times, it's easy to get discouraged, but you need to look no further than community action to see what's possible when we engage with those around us and work together to find common ground. In the words of Dr. King, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. Thank you for having the Chamber as a part of the Dr. Martin Luther King Breakfast. We are honored to partner with you. Thank you, Jasmine Arbery, for your act of kindness. Born and raised in a small rustic town of J.S. Mississippi, this mompreneur is no stranger to being in the spotlight. Tara Wallace knew early in her life that acting was her destiny. At the tender age of five, Tara found herself reenacting scenes from soap opera. I knew I wanted to do what I saw on TV, so I would go to school and practice with my friends. After graduating from Jackson State University with a bachelor's degree in dramatic arts, Tara moved to New York to continue following her dreams of becoming an actress. She enrolled into the Actors Studio Drama Program at the New School, the number one ranked art and design school in the U.S., where she received her master's degree in fine arts. From there, Tara began to take her place as a professional actress. Tara became greatly involved in the theater after graduating from the New School, but it wasn't until 2013 when Tara's breakout role on VH1's hit show, Love & Hip Hop, the name Tara Wallace became a household name. While Tara is most known for her reality star character and her guest appearance on VTV's Marriage Bootcamp, Tara is extremely passionate about women's empowerment and giving back to the community. This dedication led to Tara's co-authoring the self-empowerment book, The Goddess Potential, a guide to developing a relationship with your inner self. Aside from acting, writing, and philanthropy, Tara's most prized accomplishment is being a mother to her three boys, Jameson, Kaz, and Gunnar Pankey. Tara strongly believes that motherhood is the source for inspiration to her many talents. Thank you for joining us today for this breakfast from wherever you are. As we conclude today, I'd like to offer a benediction from the Apostle Paul. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Go in peace.